Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you on this um, Friday afternoon, or Friday morning, whenever you're listening to this. It's Friday, at any rate. I hope you've had a great week. Um, I mentioned that the next in, the next episode, which I said would be on Tuesday, but then life intervened, Mother Nature intervened, actually, and we had some technical difficulties with a power outage and all sorts of good things, good stuff. So here we are on Friday, but with the promised interview, I am speaking today with author, or with editor Marika Lindholm about her new book, we got this. Um, it is a book about single moms. Let me give you the full title of that book because there is a subtitle. It is We Got This, Solo Mom Stories of Grit, Heart, and Humor. Marika is one of the editors. The other uh, editors are um, Cheryl Dumasnil, Domenica Ruda, and Catherine Schonk. And it is um, a book that really celebrates single moms of all kinds. The description of it reads as follows. We Got This celebrates the 15 million solo moms who parent on their own in the United States. A compelling, moving, and humorous compilation of essays, poems, and inspirational quotes by moms raising kids on their own, this book gives voice to women who, despite their differences in age, race, culture, sexual orientation, economic circumstance, and route to single motherhood, are bound together in a conscious coalition that is strong, proud, and dedicated to their children. We Got This reminds solo moms that they are powerful and important, and there's a whole community of women out there who understand what they are going through. So this book is really just full of um, so many wonderful stories. Like it says, it, it, it has stories, essays, um, poems, all kinds of different means, genres, what have you, of bringing the stories of these women to life. And it, it's, it's, um, it's really wonderful in that you can pick it up and read a chapter or a story. The stories um, are not long. So if you have a spare minute, you can grab it and read a story and um, feel inspired or feel compassion or feel in awe or feel all of the above by the stories that are in here. It really does run the gamut of emotion as you read through it. There's some humor. There's definitely moments that um, make you want to cry. There's moments that make you want to cheer. Really all of those great emotions that you like to feel when you read a book like this. The editors it did a wonderful job of collecting not only a wide variety of um, entries, I guess, stories, essays, etc. I never know what word to use. I apologize. <laughs> but they also uh, gathered this incredible group of women who come from all kinds of circumstances. And as it says, um, differences in age, race, cultural, sex sexual orientation, economic circumstance, etc., etc., etc. There is just a wealth of diversity in this in these stories, but also that common thread of being a solo mom, regardless of the situation and the circumstances that brought them to solo motherhood. I really enjoyed the stories. I really enjoyed hearing um, the women's experiences. And I just felt it felt good reading the stories, knowing that the women had this platform to put their story out there and that other women who are solo parenting, um, or who might even be just facing solo parenting, you know, if they, um, are about, if they're going through a divorce, uh, et cetera, or maybe their, um, their spouse is being deployed, whatever it is, they know 
through these stories that they have a community out there and they aren't going through this alone. There are other women, other parents who understand what it is that they are going through. So the editors did a really great job of compiling these stories and putting them together in a wonderful book of companionship and hope and support. So without further ado from me, let's go ahead and turn to the interview. The book again is We Got This, and one of the editors is Marika Lindholm. Hi, Marika. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. It is wonderful to have you here, and we are here to talk about uh, the new book, We Got This. Before we talk about the book, though, um, I'd love for my listeners to get to know you just a little bit. So if you could share whatever you feel comfortable sharing, that would be great. Sure. Um, I'm a founder of a website called Esme.com. It stands for Empowering Solo Moms Everywhere, and I'm trained as a sociologist, but um, love reading and writing, so um, that's been always uh, something I'm super uh, passionate about, but the website is what I've been working on for the last five years. Um, just It's a support site for moms who raise kids on their own. I taught at Northwestern University for 15 years, issues of inequality and diversity, and so the website is was the culmination of that, and now the book is another uh, offshoot of all my passions, so I'm really excited to talk about it. Oh, great. I know you're one of the editors on the book. Was uh, the the concept your idea or was it a collective idea? It was my idea. I uh, I gathered a really amazing team of editors after I wanted to uh, showcase the voices of solo mom writers because my website, we uh, not only have resource articles that are practical and give advice, but we also had a section where we asked for poetry and essays and short fiction. And I realized there was this amazing wealth of great writing by solo moms, and I wanted to showcase it. And then um, I, uh, Catherine Schank, who is one of the co-editors, she's an, the editor on Esme. And then um, Dominica Ruda had written articles for Esme, and she's just an amazing writer who's in New York City and a memoirist and best, you know, New York Times bestselling author. And then Cheryl Dumasnil in San Francisco is our guide on the site for uh, LGBTQ issues. And she's a poet and an amazing woman. So I just assembled my dream team. And it was great to have um, their knowledge and their background, their support as we tried to assemble the best collection we could. So, yeah, yeah they sounds like a really great team. Um, so go ahead and tell us about the book, We Got This. Sure. Uh, well, We Got This, uh, Solo Mom Stories of Grit, Heart, and Humor is an anthology with poems and essays and quotes by solo moms. Some of them are very well known, like Mary Carr, Amy Poehler, Audre Lorde, Elizabeth Alexander, and then some of the, the you know, women that I discovered through their submissions to Esme, and they're the ones who are yet to be discovered. And uh, we tried to put together a book that had a diversity of voices, really spoke to the diversity of experience for solo moms. And um, when I use the term solo mom, I don't just mean a mom who is necessarily divorced. There's also moms that are parenting on their own because of deployment, incarceration, uh, perhaps a spouse's mental illness, a spouse or a partner is overseas. There's just a variety of reasons why we have many, many women in America parenting on their own. We wanted to give expression to all the different experiences. And um, I think we did it. I think it would be hard pressed to find <laughs> a demographic that we did not include in the book. So I feel pretty proud of it. Yeah, it's amazing the, the diversity and the number of different, not just types of people who are writing, but types of um submissions, you know, there's stories, there's poems, there's all kinds of things. Um, how many, I don't even know what word to use, how many um, entries? So we have, <laughs> yeah, we have, <laughs> yeah, I know we're always, we're juggling uh, so many. So we have, um, I'd say 75 solo mom writers represented, whether it's just a quote or a short essay or a poem, but uh, yeah, there's, so there's 75 unique voices that are in there. And um, some of them are quite short because we know that for particularly for our audience, it doesn't necessarily have to be solo moms, but you know, any parent is super busy and we know we want them to be able to pick up the book and read a little bit and put it down. So um, 
it's structured in a way that is easily digestible over, you know, short periods of time. And, um, yeah, we just hope we put it together in a way that we have song titles as each section. And we start out with, uh, the kids are all right and end with here comes the sun. Cause we want to end on a positive note. And in between is stuff about dating, isn't it romantic and challenges and change is going to come. So, we really tried to put together an anthology that would be inspiring and also, you know, resonate with pretty much anybody. I can't imagine that any human being wouldn't find something in there that would resonate. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, how did you select the stories to include then? I guess that we had two main goals. Uh, one is, of course, wonderful writing that would resonate. And then secondly, we just wanted to make sure that we represented the diversity of solo mom voices. So we were very cognizant that we just didn't want, you know, there are so many essays about divorce. We just didn't, you know, we have a number of them in there, but that wasn't, we wanted to make sure that thematically we addressed all the different circumstances that lead to uh, a woman being a solo mom. And then we have um, in the first chapter, essays and poems by kids of solo moms. So we just wanted to make sure that we address this very rich, diverse experience. And that's how, then they were selected in that way. And then, you know, we have some that come from the Esme site, some that we, um, you know, some of course, well-known authors, we went out and uh, asked for excerpts. And then we uh, have a lot of original content in there. And that was really fun was finding the writers to write something for us and selecting you know, the best of the best. And so we're really excited to have those new writers out out in the world. Now that you've gotten a little better understanding of the book from Marika's perspective, it is time to take our first break of the podcast. But uh, when we come back, we'll be talking a little bit more about that team of editors, uh, and more about the book itself. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with um, Marika Lindholm, one of the editors of the new anthology, We Got This, which is a collection of stories about and by single moms. So let's go ahead and return to that interview with Marika. And you said earlier that you were able to assemble your dream team for the book. How did you and that team work together um, in putting the book together? Yeah, well, thank you. Goodness for Google Hangout, <laughs> because uh, like I said, Dominica Ruda is in New York City, Catherine Schonk is in Chicago, Cheryl dumas Neal is in San Francisco, I live in the Hudson Valley, so we had a regularly scheduled Google Hangout, and um, we would work, um, you know, sort of assigned tasks each week, and Cheryl was our, the one that was, who was really the contact with poets, and then the rest of us would, you know, try to um, find the the memoirists or different fiction writers that might want to write a piece for us. And then, um, yeah, we would just get together. And it was actually, I, I'm so close to them now. I'm so, we just, it was, I don't even remember one point where we had huge conflict. You know, we might disagree about the submission, but it was very much a wonderful experience. The challenge was, of course, later on that getting the permissions for certain things and there's a lot of bureaucracy and sort of finishing up the book. But in terms of that collaborative experience, it was so great. And um, I love them dearly. And I think we're going to have a really good time promoting the book <laughs> because uh, we all get along. And um, it's just a, I, it, it's just a testament to how, you know, you can collaborate and work together and there were no silly stereotypical issues around it at all. We just really worked 
together really well. And, um, you know, they, they are more established writers than I am. And I had, you know, I was really happy to have them on the team and I'm a super Virgo organized. So I was the taskmaster. <laughs> <laughs> I was the one that kept everyone like, we got to get this done by this time. <laughs> so Yeah. Oh, well, that yeah. sounds wonderful. You yourself have um, a submission in the book. Can you tell, uh, talk a little bit about your story? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, it's called Sunshine and Butterfly, and both of those are names of parakeets in my life. And those parakeets came into my life just when I was in the worst probably, stage of divorce. I just moved out uh, with a three and a five year old, and um, it was, you know, anytime anyone says to me that they're going to get a divorce, I have a lot of empathy because people who haven't been through it don't understand how horrible it is. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in a lot of pain and my, you know, my kids were three and five and I moved into a small apartment and um, I created these beautiful bedrooms for them. And I slept on the couch and my daughter who was five was obsessed with butterflies and we got her a blue parakeet at PetSmart that was a butterfly and she loved that butter. um, That that was a parakeet and she loved that little parakeet so much. And the story is about that parakeet flying out the window behind the shower curtain. You know, we would shut the windows diligently and somehow that bird escaped. And that was a symbol of how horrible my life was because Mm -hmm. we, we just, we just both were crying and walking in the streets and trying to find, I mean, you know, we Evanston, Illinois, I was teaching at Northwestern. It's pretty hard to find a very tiny blue parakeet. And um, there's a situation where we end up with a yellow parakeet. And I kind of talk about how by the time that yellow parakeet dies, we've kind of come into our own and uh, we were going to be okay. But it's using, you know, as you know, many short stories have birds on them. I didn't, it wasn't my intention, but it was actually a true <laughs> true, true story in my yeah. life. And um, it was a really hard time. It was Chicago and, you know, I had these little kids. And so I'm so sorry. For that. I think my favorite part of that story was um, the, when the, the woman called you and said she had your parakeet and you went to look at it and it looked absolutely nothing like your parakeet. You know, I just think hope springs eternal, right? We were just so excited. This woman had found a parakeet in her tree and, you know, I, I just, I just wanted it so much to be my daughter's parakeet. And then we get there and it's yellow <laughs> and hers is blue. And, uh, you know, she it was, uh, but then she gave us this beautiful cage. You know, it's a stunning cage. She said, take it, take it. And we took the bird home and the bird turned out to be so much more friendly and loving than the other one. So it was really, uh, it was, it was, it was just one of those happy coincidences. I mean, really that we, ended up getting other birds was really great for our family. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good metaphor in a lot of ways. The the anthology includes stories from, you know, as you said, a variety of moms, moms who are single because of divorce or death of a spouse or deployment or by choice or incarceration, all of those things. Did you find that there were themes, though, throughout all of the submissions, um, even with the diversity of people submitting? Yeah, one, I mean, there are, again, two themes. I think one is resilience, you know, just the challenges that some of the moms face. I mean, one's, I think there's a poem about uh, suicide, husband suicide. There's a mom who loses her spouse to mental illness. And I mean, just one, oh, someone who, Angie Ricketts has a heart attack while her, you know, husband's deployed. So there's such resilience across the board. And then the other is this their fierce, fierce love for their children. I mean, that comes through throughout. You know, I just, I mean, obviously all parents love their children, but, um, you know, there's what, what most solo moms have to go through to get things done. They're just, their regular day is much more complicated. And so what they, the you know, not sleeping at night or you know, taking out an extra job or whatever, all the things that they have to do. So I would say that, you know, those two qualities are seen throughout in terms of their just being remarkably resilient and then just that the love for their kids that comes through on every page. 
And I agree with your assessment that there's something in here for everyone, even if you're not a solo mom or a solo parent. Um, how do you think, you know, more quote unquote traditional two parent ha households might benefit from these stories? Yeah, they really are just their human stories and they're about, you know, the fears, the guilt, the funny situations, the unexpected challenges. I just think that anyone who's a parent can, it'll resonate. They'll find something in there, a little knowing nod as they, they see what happened. I mean, there's, um, you know, when you can't pick up your kid on time or when an unexpected challenge occurs and, um, you know, it's just, uh, I feel that, you know, you're going to find something in there that and it might be that your own, you saw your own mom going through it, you know, or it might be that someone, you know, really close to you that it's resonating because of that as well. But mm -hmm. just that, that they're all just really human. I, I feel that um, they're laying bare some of the, the truths. I mean, some funny stuff, I mean, you know, about dating and um, just, embarrassing situations and it's it or economic challenge there's just so much in there and so rich that i think that pretty much anyone will find something i really would love if um you know policymakers and politicians read this so they'd have a clear sense of some of the challenges that just regular folks go through but mm -hmm. <laughs> that might be too much to ask <laughs> <laughs> um one of one of the the incidents that was recorded was um, a single mom who was trying to get her her stroller down the steps, and a, a guy that looked a little threatening approached her, but then he just picked up the stroller and helped her carry it down the stairs. And when he got to the bottom, he said, "You know, I was raised by a single mom." And at one point in her story, she thought, "Is my I hope my I hope my child grows up with kind of that sense of helping others." Uh, out of the situation and so I, I agree I think it, it is they are just human stories and the the hopes that we have not only for ourselves but for our children absolutely I remember that I, I that I think that video went viral and I remember being very moved by it <laughs> yeah um yeah I know that there's got to be at least one person listening to this who's wondering okay well what about solo dads did that comment did that question ever come up it comes up all the time. Um, I'm very empathetic to solo dads and um, solo dads that, um, you know, I, I'm actually friends with. But uh, because our site is geared to specific types of support around, you know, domestic violence or well-being, and, and because it's women who are overwhelmingly doing the job of solo parenting, uh, we then, it just, I felt this is in my, my wheelhouse. I didn't I felt that this was specifically for women. I'm sure it'll resonate with solo dads, but it just, in terms of, you know, you know, you're supposed to write what you know, but this is also an area that I've been, I've been working on behalf of solo moms for, you know, six years. And it just was something that I felt was important and familiar. And um, we're not, and maybe, you know, who knows? I think someone else should do that book, <laughs> but right now <laughs> yeah. um, I really wanted to, I really wanted to focus on the moms because, you know, if you think about, you know, we make less, we have less pay, we have less opportunity, we have more structural discrimination, there are more stereotypes, you know, if a solo dad doesn't make cupcakes on the day that they're supposed to, they're, everyone's more forgiving, but the solo mom doesn't do it. And there seems to be a little bit of more, more of a stigma. So I really mm -hmm. wanted to honor, honor and, uh, you know, respect the hard work that so many millions of, you know, solo moms are doing every day. There's 23 million American kids being raised by solo moms. So I think wow. we, you know, wanted to make sure that, that they were honored just on their own. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have yeah. um, you've spoken about it throughout, but can you, uh, can you talk a little bit more about ESME and the website and how it's just how it's set up for, for people to access and find resources? Sure. Um, you know, it's a absolutely 100% free website. It's called Esme.com, and we have um, resources, over 5,000 resources state by state. If you need help with something, we have chat rooms, and uh, we have you know, hundreds of articles on particular uh, areas of that you might need help with. For example, um, you know, divorce, issues around co-parenting, uh, we have solo moms by choice. We have guides on the site that are experts in each of those areas. There might be issues around addiction, adoption, 
you know, it's a huge, it's actually quite a um, hefty site of support. Uh, the most popular part of it is called Sister Chat, where moms come and talk about anything they want, and we allow people to sign up. Um, well, we do screen everybody, so they have to be moms, um, but uh, they can be a former solo mom or maybe potential solo mom, so anyone can go, any mom can go on the site. And they don't have to use their real name because some of the topics are sensitive. And they go there to talk. And every day I hear amazing things about, you know, um, the challenges that they're going through. Some of them are very uh, hard and sad. And then other moms chime in and try to support them. And it's just been incredible to watch uh, that community. And um, like I said, we you know we have articles and we do also – have a humor section and we do poetry and essays and short stories if people want to submit them. But the main thing is that we're really trying to create a community of support when you're in those really, really vulnerable and hard moments parenting alone. And uh, I always say I would love to throw parades for solo moms. So this is sort mm -hmm. of my little, my, not my little, but it's my parade. We have to take our second break of the podcast now, but before we go to break, I just want to say how much I love listening to and um, really appreciate hearing people who are so passionate about their work. You can tell that Marika is really passionate about the work that she does, about uh, the website Esme, about the stories that they have gathered and the women in those stories. So I really appreciate that. It is, as I said, time to take a break. You are listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will We'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with Marika Lindholm, one of the um, editors of the book, We Got This. I, yeah. I would imagine that you had way more submissions than you could possibly use for the book. Do you think there will be a second book? Uh, we joke that we're just so, we are so fried from that book <laughs> by putting it together, but we do have an, another book coming out that is going to be focusing on the children of solo moms. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, I think the working title is We Got This Too, T-O-O, and it's The Amazing Kids of Solo Moms. It's an inspirational book to show moms and kids what's possible with, if you're raised by a single mom, focusing on people like Barack Obama, George Washington, Rosa Parks, Annie Oakley, James Baldwin. I mean, there's incredible, credible um, people who've been raised by solo moms, and so that's the, what we're working on right now as a a really lovely inspirational book that moms and kids can read together and look at what's possible and just and with really interesting stories like John Urschel is a football player and a gifted mathematician. You know, we're trying to draw out the stories that are really interesting and not, I mean, there's thousands of movie stars that are raised by solo moms, but, you know, we would only feature ones of course that have like, something extra special that they do but it's it's a real it's a beginning of the project but really fun to work on because there's so many incredibly inspirational people who've been raised by by solo moms mm -hmm. so that's we got this too <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> um as i mentioned yeah. you have a submission in the book and uh you 
considering that you you taught, you've been in academia, I, I would assume that you've written um, in a lot of different contexts. Is writing or editing writing a book or editing a book in this case is that something that you've always wanted to do, or did it just kind of evolve out of your work? You know, I got to be honest. I always wanted to. I was a kid who imagined being a writer, and uh, I wrote diaries. And uh, you know, I I have di- I I kept them, and my friends were like, "You got to toss those if you don't want someone to find them." <laughs> but I have like the f- diary from when I was six years old with the flower on it and the lock, and I have in there it says, "Nixon is a liar." <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I've I've always been. Um, you know, really interested in writing, but, you know, my life, I went to get a sociology PhD and I was focused on academia, but then once I was entrenched in uh, teaching and felt pretty confident, I started to take some writing classes at Northwestern because when you, since as a professor there, I I could take them for free. And Mm -hmm. um, it was just, it came at the right time because it was right when I was going through my divorce. And uh, I just wrote, I I remember my first, uh, like, short story. I was, I handed this, I don't know, it must have weighed like three pounds because I just wrote and wrote and wrote. And (laughs) this, you know, amazing instructor, Fred Schaefer, was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Not a short story. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, it was, it was probably, it was just, but I, it was, it just poured out of me, and I, I do, I really, um, always wanted to be in somehow involved in the literary community, and I'm pretty excited. I have all kinds of ideas for future writing, but you know, it wasn't. I'm not supremely gifted. I, I've, I've worked really hard at my writing, and academic writing is very different. You know, so I had to, you know, come into those workshops and classes and sort of realize that. You know, I, I had work to do, put it that way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So out of your uh, your unique experiences that led you to um, this book, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Yeah, I think, you know, coming is that you really need to know your basic writing rules. You know, I think that some people just think, oh, oh, I'm good at writing. And, um, you know, I was in a lot of workshops and, and clubs. And, you know, that just because you like to write doesn't mean that, you know, it's gonna so one is just kind of you know no passive voice, show don't tell, avoid cliches, all those things that you know most writers know about, but if you're coming in from another field, you know you probably need some help with that, and then you can break the rules later, of course, but I think in the beginning, like be really attentive to like just read get as many your hand on as many books as you can about writing, just so you you know you don't make a lot of mistakes that then people can't see your real story because they're getting distracted by some of the, you know, problems that you have. And then, um, and I think, you know, write without judgment in the beginning. I think that's really important. People told me that and uh, it was hard for me to do. I kind of wanted people to read my stuff (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I really should have just allowed myself more time to, you know, grow and learn. Uh, and then, of course, the very basic thing that we should all tell our kids, even when they're in school, but, you know, read your stuff out loud. <laughs> mm-hmm. hear, 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 you know, have hear what it sounds like and make sure that it sounds okay, because, um, you know, in our head, things sound like they, they, you think it sounds smooth, and then you read, hear it out, and it's not smooth at all. So, I mean, I'm really, I, those, I know those sound very rudimentary to many people, perhaps, who are established writers, but if you're breaking into writing, like I was coming from a very different type of writing, um, I, those, those rules were actually really important for me to kind of go in and learn that stuff. And then, um, oh, the other is I feel like um, just watching other writers and being in workshops is that they get so hung up on their first sentence and their first paragraph you know, I think just keep going. I've seen a lot of people like, I just can't get past. Like, I just want that first sentence to be perfect. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think that uh, I, and I, I was one of those people, you know, I would kind of agonize over like, oh, is this first sentence literary? And of course that first sentence probably will never be in the final product. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be in what's actually published. So I think that my advice would be is just write and feel free, and then you're going to have gems in there, and you're going to shape them, and it's going to be great. But, um, yeah, I just think I've, I've seen a lot of stuck people, and um, 
I think it's better just to let yourself feel the freedom of not necessarily writing a wonderful thing from the beginning. I mean, that's what editing is all about. You know, and have people you trust, you know, to read your work. I mean, I, we had a lot of, um, in the workshops I was in, we were fortunate to have writers come in and they all talked about it. I mean, whether it was Tobias, Wool, Francine, Prose, I mean, really great writers would come in and say, oh, no, I have someone I trust before I show it to, you know, my editor or my publisher. So mm -hmm. it's nice to have, you know, someone that you really trust that will be able to give you an honest response to your work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on the opposite side, um, when you're not writing and you have time, uh, do you have favorite authors or genres that you like to read? Yeah, I'm super, um, i just a voracious reader. I mean, it's kind of saved. I always say it's, reading saved me because I was not a good student in high school, but I love to read. And, um, you know, obviously, I was able to get through grad school and get a PhD. So somehow something was mm -hmm. happening, and it was because I was reading all the time. Um, but I used to read, you know, just, um, you know, I would read Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth, and I'd read all the Indian writers, and then I'd read, you know, Russian writers. But really what happened when I got to college was I took a course on um, women writers, and I just became um, very interested in, you know, strong writing by women. So I remember being blown away by Maxine Hong Kingston's Woman Warrior or Louise mm -hmm. Erdrich's Love, Love Medicine. And I just that so my obsession was, uh, great fiction by women writers continues. Like I just love those Ferrante Neapolitan novels. I was actually quite obsessed with them. <laughs> and then one of my favorite writers is uh, Jennifer Egan. I mean, I, I love the book A Visit from the Goon Squad. I don't know why I just love that book so much. And then Toni Morrison is a goddess. And even short stories by female writers, Lori Moore, Alice Munro, Amy Hempel. You know, I have to say also amazing memoirs like um, one of my co-editors, Dominica Ruda, she wrote an incredible memoir called With or Without You. And, um, you know, I had read that. And then, you know, she had, I met her through Esme, and I was like, I, you are, I love your book. So mm -hmm. I really, I'm really drawn to a strong fiction and memoirs by women. So it mm -hmm. actually has probably had a pretty good background for creating an anthology. <laughs> <laughs> so. Sounds like it, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I know you have the Esme website, um, and, and, and then so tell people where they can find that. Is there a website for the book, and where can people find you on social media? Give us all that good information. Yeah, so um, you know, Esme.com, ESME.com is basically the big site with everything on it, and we will we have a book page on there, and then. Um, Esme Solo Moms. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. So um, that yeah, we're pretty easy to find. Um, we have a pretty strong presence on Facebook and lots of great groups for moms from all over the country. And so um, yeah, that that's just Esme.com. We're easy to find. Okay, and. We have covered quite a few topics today, but is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to mention about the book or writing anything at all? Well, I wanted to give a shout out to um, Ninth Letter. It's a literary journal. They, um, Philip Graham saw, I did a panel at the AWP and um, with solo mom writers, and he was one of the first people to say, you know, this, this is something, this is, this is something I want to pay attention to. And he put together an online special feature called Solo Mom Sessions. And um, it was like the first time that we were able to, you know, showcase the work by solo moms and, and then just feel like w that work was being validated. And then I also just wanted to say that if you're a solo mom out there trying to write, trying to juggle everything, just know that, you know, they're, um, they're we're trying to get your attention. We understand the struggle and, um, you know, we just, really want to honor that work because uh, it's so hard to, you know, support your family and juggle all of the, the family, you know, family work stuff and then try to be, a, a, you know, do your writing, but people are doing it and they're doing it really well. And it's just, I'm really excited to showcase that talent and, you know, we can only showcase a fraction of all the great talent out there, but um, I'm just, I'm really honored to do so. I mean, I really, this has been a passion project and, it's really, really exciting for me. 
So that, that's how I, yeah. Nothing much about okay. me, but just about them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for that, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk to me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for um, letting me share my passion for this. Thank you. So once again, I want to say thank you to Marika for taking the time to speak with me about this book, about um, the work that she is so clearly passionate about. Really appreciated that. And I appreciate you as well, my listeners. Thank you so much for joining me every week. Uh, if you are interested in um, these essays, this collection, you should definitely check out the book. You don't have to be a single mom. Um, you can be just a human. <laughs> you maybe even can be an alien. I don't know. They might enjoy it too. I'm not going to judge. But this book has a little bit of something for everyone. So definitely check it out. In the meantime, I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. I hope that you will join me again next week on Tuesday for, uh, barring Mother Nature, an interview with Richard C. Lyons about his book, The DNA of Democracy. So join me on Tuesday. Have a wonderful weekend and go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.